In this video, we're going to look at geometric progressions and how they apply to some contextual examples. So let's return to an example that's similar to one we've seen previously. And here it states that a construction company notes that the time taken to construct scaffolding depends on the number of layers of scaffolding required. And this would be a sensible assumption because to construct the second layer, all of the scaffold balls and scaffold poles have got to be lifted on top of the first layer and so on the higher up you go. It then goes on to state that it takes 45 minutes to construct the first layer and then each subsequent layer takes 16% longer than the previous layer. Now, as I mentioned there, this is representing a geometric progression. And the reason we know that is indicated by this statement. Each subsequent layer takes 16% longer than the previous layer to erect. Well, what we have here is a common multiplier because to increase something by 16%, we need to multiply it by 1.16. So our common difference or our common multiplier in this example is 1.16. Let's begin by listing some of the terms in the sequence. Our first term we know is 45 because it takes 45 minutes to construct the first layer. And then it takes 16% longer to construct the second layer. So we need to multiply 45 by 1.16 to find the time taken to construct the second layer. Well, 45 times 1.16 is 52.2. Now, in order to determine the time taken to construct the third layer, we need to multiply the previous term, the 52.2, by the common multiplier of 1.16, which gives us 60.552. And finally, if we wanted to find the fourth term, we would have to multiply the 60.552 by the 1.16. And that gives us an answer of 70.240, accurate to three decimal places. Now let's refer to the questions, because the first part of the question says, how long does it take to construct the fourth layer? Well, by listing the numbers in our series, we've seen that that's going to be 70.240 minutes. But in order to gain some confidence in our formulas, let's check that using the first formula, which states that the nth term equals ar to the power of n minus 1. Well, in this case, the nth term is the fourth. We're trying to find the fourth term. a represents our first term, and r represents our common multiplier. n minus 1, or 4 minus 1, is 3. So we have 45 times 1.16 cubed. And when we run that through the calculator, we get 70.240 as we'd expect. So we know how long it takes to construct the fourth layer. Part B asks us how long it takes to construct the first four layers. So what we can do is we can add these first four terms together because it takes 45 minutes to construct the first layer then 52.2 minutes, and so on for the first four terms. Well, if we add those up manually on our calculators, we get an answer of 227.992 minutes. However, we're going to check that with our formula, and we're going to use the second formula for the sum of the first n terms, and in this case, n is 4. So we're doing the sum of the first four terms is a, which is 45, open brackets, common multiplier 1.16 to the power n, n is 4, minus 1. And all of that is going to be divided by r minus 1. Well, r in this case is 1.16 minus 1 gives us 0.16. Now running that through the calculator gives us 227.992. minutes. So once again we have confidence in our formula. Let's move on to part C then. And part C says how long would it take to construct the 25th layer? Now it wouldn't be feasible to list the first 25 terms so we have to rely on our formula. And we're trying to find the 25th term. And the formula is ar to the n minus 1 or 45 times 1.16 to the n minus 1, 
n's 25 minus 1 is 24. And that gives us 1585.6. 5.6 minutes. Now the final part of the question asks us how long it would take to construct the first 15 layers, so adding the first 15 terms together. And again we need to rely on our formula. So we've got the sum of the first 15 terms is the first term, 45, times open brackets, common multiplier, to the power of n, n is 15, minus 1, divided by common multiplier minus 1, or 1 1.16 minus 1, which we've already established is 0 0.16. And that gives us an answer for the sum of the first 15 terms equal to 2324.7. We're going to take a look at one more example of a geometric progression, except this time we're going to have a reduction from term to term. Now, once again, we have a scenario similar to one that we've seen previously. It states that an engineering company begins mass production of a new component. In the very first week of production, 225 components were rejected. Due to improvements to the process, the number of rejects each week was seen to reduce by approximately 8% every week for the first 15 weeks of production. Now once again we get the indication that this is a geometric progression because the number of rejects is seen to reduce by a percentage or a common multiplier. Now the difference this time is that we're reducing by 8% and the way that we reduce a number by 8% is by multiplying it by 0.92. We basically multiply it by 92% but as a decimal. So there's our common multiplier. The numbers in the sequence are going to get progressively smaller by 8% each time. So let's start listing our numbers. Our first number we know is 225 and our second number is going to be 225 times that common ratio or that common multiplier. And so the second term in the sequence is 207. But as we move into the third week, we need to look at the second week or the number of rejects from the second week in order to find our value. So we will do 207 times the 0.92 this time because the 8% reduction is on the previous week's number of rejects. That gives us 190.44. And we'll find one more term by doing 190.44 times the common multiplier. And that gives us 175.20. And that sequence continues. We have two parts to the question. The first part says how many components were rejected in week 15. So we're trying to find the 15th term using the first formula there. Well, the 15th term is the first term, 225, times the common multiplier this time, which is 0.92 to the power of n minus 1, well n is 15, n minus 1 is 40. Therefore the number of components rejected in the 15th week is 17.02. And finally, part b asks how many components were rejected in the first 15 weeks. So we would be adding the rejects from week 1, 2, 2, 5, to the rejects from week 2, week 3, week 4, all the way up to week 15, where we know that the number of rejects was 70.02. So we have sum of the first 15 terms equals the first term, 2, 2, 5, multiplied by the common multiplier, 0 0.92, to the power of n, 15, minus 1, all divided by the common multiplier 0.92 minus 1. We'll just take a bit of care here because 0.92 minus 1 is minus 0.0a. So we have a negative number on our denominator there, minus 0.08. Well, if we run that through the calculator, we get an answer of 2007.2 two nine rejects in total. 
So I hope you found these two videos useful. First of all, looking at how we can apply arithmetic progressions to solve some contextual problems. And then in the second part of this video, how we can apply the formulas for geometric progressions in order to solve problems where we have a percentage increase or percentage decrease as we move from term to term.